Welcome to the section 16 of the course with persistent with C++ and Qt. Now we are going to implement the file scope log verification of our fix compiler. So we need to go to Qt. Um, as you may remember, uh, we finished already the rule while the, the rule loop and we're going to start with the file loop. Uh, in this loop we're going to see one of the principal difference between the RPM syntax analyzer and the infix syntax analyzer. Remember, we had been taking the lexem from the right of the sentence and going to the left. Doing that, we can build the rules directly as we did in the RPM compiler because we are going to take the right operator uh, first, followed by the operation, and lastly with the left operand. So before determining which kind of operation is the current one, first we need to verify the correctness of the operand. Okay. So first of all, we're going to take the write and operation token from the license stack to verify them. So we can start from Lex Analyzer Lexem. Remember that rules are joined together with an, an operation to make them have a sequential order. Thereby, we will use the flag that we defined previously when a semicolon is present. We will need two holders of, to the joining rules, build an operation with them, and locate them at the tree. Out of this, we're going, I'm going to create two ints. Let's start. We are going to handle this, the first row. Because I we can do this easily. Remember the Lobiru stack is the stack of the tree. So this is actually our int uh, pointing to the to the sum where is uh, the node in the tree. And we're just going to build a true a true node. So this is quite simple. We are going to create a a, a token with uh, we are we are still. Um, how to explain it. It is where I'm going to build a token and additional to that I'm going to put it in the tree index uh, with a new node. I also put the flag um, as false. Next, yeah. If we are still in the verification of one node, rather joining a finished rule with another, we we'll start building a rule. So else, 
to the right operand is the first one from the stack we can determine it already without need to carry above the left operand this verification will be by a type of token in this case the only one that we can do is the id and operand because it's the another one it means that it's an error Explain that we're going to do a switch and we'll just handle the, the cases of the ID and the operator. a new break. Uh, the other cases we can just append them to avoid uh, too much code. about these cases and the only thing that we need to do is just put the signal with the value of 2 that is um, let me just remember here mm. It's an error. Okay. So for both cases, we will determine the left operator uh, in a certain way. Begin with the ID, the part of the ID of the right, because this is the switch of the right operand. So we're going to handle in different ways in the ID and the operator. We're going to start with the ID. And the first thing that we need to do is to push an uh, atom to the builder stack. Then we're going to determine if the operation is a negation of a radio. Uh, this is to avoid the on the left operand because in the binary uh, we need the left operand to go to the negation is only required the right operand. So okay, this is just We're going to act this uh, operand. Remember that this is the character of the negation operand operation. And if so, we're going to just to build uh, the operation in that way. Display and let, just let me call it. Uh, it's worth knowing that uh, we are not uh, just finishing in this way because uh, after that we need to verify other cases like uh, the order, the matching of the of the brackets, and we need to determine if there is a uh, error sign on. So this is this is a uh, you can think about uh, our operation as a temporary result. Well, the what's re what what really matters is to determine if the the builder stack that means the tree and the token stack that means uh, 
the lyrics of that of that notes that are in the tree. Uh, at the end, it needs just to be one uh, one sentence, one rule. Uh, in the in that way, we are going to determine that it was uh, it was correct the compile the compilation operation. So, um, in contrast, if uh, this is the case to the negation that is the only one that it's a uh, unary operation and uh, to the binary operation first we need to check for errors uh, either there is an, there's no enough operands in both stacks this is why I'm going to determine it we'll let's check that the, uh, the stacks uh, has uh, at least one one is the one element. So we're going to begin with token stack. And it's one, please. Six. One should terminate the signals uh, afterwards. Don't worry about it. If we break in this way, the while loop is going to finish, and we are just jumping out to the to the part where uh, we are verifying for errors and the parentheses and all the stuff that we're going to see in the next video. So considering that this is okay, that all the stacks uh, has at least one uh, one element to determine it, we now are able to start with the left operand. So, wanted to declare it. I took it from the token stack. Uh, left token equal pop out, please. Okay, with the lex operand, we have everything to view of the rule, but we also need to check the validation of this operand. To do so, we're going to create another switch inside the switch, but now with the type of the left token. Left token dot um, type. Okay. Okay, it's pretty similar. Is the same as the right operand and uh, we're going to determine just the ID and the operation cases and the other ones are just errors. So case prop lex analyzer lex ID builder stack I'm going to explain this Finish the coding. So to do so, um if before determining the type of this rule, I'm going to put it again to the to the builder stack because as you can see here, I'm going to have the lexem from the token stack, but we also need to view it from the to the tree. So in this case, I'm going to push it. I'm going to create an atom because I'm sure that it's an atom, and, and with the token that we are going to have in here, and after that. We're going to, uh, let's put it in this way, uh, we have the right and the left operation operand. So we have everything to build the operation and put it in the stack. In this case, I need to take uh, the, the indexes of the left and the right 
and is it because it's a stack we can just pull it up and take it um, it's important to have correct the order of the popping we discuss in this way so don't worry about it and we are also going to test it before the implementation to see if everything is okay and if there is uh, something that it's bad and we can just fix it okay so let's put also the default just in case um okay as you might notice we need a flag to point out that the rule is validated it means that the left and the right operation operator are uh, are in a type that is correct either id or operation and we need a flag to do so and tell to the next procedures that everything is okay so we need to create I think that we should be a good idea to put it in this way too. I don't think so. I can put it. Uh, I need to put it here because I'm going to use it outside of the walls. So it's pull. Oh, it's, it's validated. I'm going to initialize it in a false state. I mean, we're here. Okay. So we say, well, okay, I have the left and the right operation. So I have everything to build the, the rule. So this flag is true. And we finish all this stuff. What we have here, um, in this part, I'm going to put some code to say, well, um, I have the left and the right. I know the operation. So just build it, put it in the stack and determine if there is another stack in the file if the file is in the we if we reach the end of the file we ha we need to verify that there is only one one rule uh, maybe like a reminder this is a, a sequence of, so this is a sequence process so for example we might have uh, i don't know 10 rules i'm going to determine in the first loop that is here we're going to process and take all the tokens of one rule and after that when we say okay we are a uh, for example that is might be a common a common part a common uh, occasion a common cause that we reach the semicolon and we say well we finished to to handle that all the rule and we are ready to determine which operations are in there so when we determine all the operations we say okay well, let's determine if there is an error if there is not an error the compilation was successful if not uh, we need to say to the user which in in in, in what part is uh w w was the error and determining what's the uh, definitely what's the error so uh, all this process just that okay so now they just build it and um, prepare everything to the to create the, the rules and that's it Excellent. oh what's going on here let's let's operator okay Don't forget the break it's always important there's just a few cases where you don't need to break and it's when you are directly returning something so it's pretty much the same when I'm building any operation the operations are built at the end Shoulder stack dot pop and we also have a validated rule. Cool. Break. Okay. 
So as well as the previous write operation verification, other cases and are errors. So case prop flex analyzer lexem and offline case prop flex analyzer mm -hmm. open brackets case prop flex analyzer lexem close it uh -huh. case prop analyzer lexem uh, comment case prop analyzer lexem error oh. Um, error. This prop. Analyzer SM. I can take it off <laughs> from 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 the code that it's above, but I just wanted to type it, and I'm I'm feeling more confident doing this in this way. So the only thing I need to do is assign a design now to two. And this means that we reach an error. So for now, let's compile it, and this is the goodbye. This is the end of the video. There is some warnings, but uh, we can solve it uh, later. And in the next video, we're going to finish our compiler, Rura. Uh, we're certain functions that, as you might notice it, the, um, this is, you're going to see that it's pretty much the same. I wanted to change this to move it to our function and avoid the code duplication. Um, so you will see some code improvements. So don't forget to subscribe yourself in this in this in the channel, so you can see more videos about this uh, interesting project. Um, I'm here to help if you have any any doubt, any question that you might you might require it. Uh, please notice it that you can do it in the comments without problem. Uh, I would like to help you. This is the reason I'm here. So thank you. Bye bye.